Anyone who's seen the TV series Black Mirror has probably drawn parallels between our lives and what the show's creators imagined and brought to the screen. One vivid example is the system of social credit scores or ratings in China. It's a way of supposedly creating a harmonious social order. Now Chinese people dream of reaching that magical score of 1050, if someone achieves that score, they become a model Chinese citizen. Depending on a person's behavior, their rating can drop or on the contrary, increase. Information about any of a person's activities goes into a unified registry, available to commercial, judicial, municipal, and law enforcement agencies. But what happens to those who fail to attain the desired score and whose rating falls below 500 points? Watch to the end and you'll find out. That's what today's video is about. So what happens to those whose social credit rating in China drops to critical levels? First no travel, because no one will sell them tickets for any kind of transportation. No loans, no good jobs and social isolation, because their circle of acquaintances is monitored too and such connections don't bode well, and that logically leads to the next question, how is a person's behavior trap? Two big Chinese companies, Alibaba and Tencent, are engaged in collecting data on the country's citizens. The fate of every Chinese person depends on these two companies. Tencent owns WeChat, a messaging app used by about 80% of the population. It's also like a social network similar to Facebook, where all kinds of interest groups are assembled and people can share photos and videos. Alibaba is a huge e-commerce platform with mobile payment services. These two companies control about 90% of China's mobile payments market. So what kind of information do they gather? All kinds. What products Chinese citizens buy and wear, geolocation data to track where and when someone goes, interests, income, connections, viewing and reading habits, in short everything you need to understand the system. There are several types of social ratings in China. Let's start with the ratings for commercial organizations. There's even a website Credit Chino Gov CN. A Chinese citizen can register there and provide their data, but won't receive any definitive numerical rating. First and foremost the social credit system applies to commercial enterprises. On that website search bar, you're asked to provide the standardized registration number in the rating system for organizations. The idea is this, if you want to start working with a company, check out their reputation. Go to the site, enter their number or name and you'll see all the information the system has on them. Basically every country in the world has something similar. USA also has plenty of commercial databases, free and paid, where you can find all you need, who a company is registered to, revenue, taxes paid, lawsuits, etc. Now let's look at personal ratings for Chinese citizens. Again it quickly becomes clear that there is no unified nationwide rating system, how can that be? Let's figure it out. Some provinces or cities do have active social rating systems, mostly experimental so far. For example, the province of Hunan has implemented a system with a maximum rating of 110 points, the systems vary, tracking different parameters. Average people find them completely confusing. But what about those oft-touted restrictions we hear about in every media? Close attention should be paid to China's black and red lists. The black lists are publicly accessible on the main website CreditChinaGovCN. You can easily look up any Chinese citizen, enter their data, and get the relevant information. You might ask, why doesn't the social rating system cover the whole country and why are there differences in how it's implemented? It's very simple. The first public mention of pilot projects appeared in the media in 2014. At that time, the system was being tested in certain regions. By 2021, the experiment had gradually expanded to include about 100 Chinese cities and counties. However, the central government has not developed uniform criteria for calculating ratings, or defined exactly what constitutes clearly positive versus negative behavior. Official documents also did not establish what form the social rating should take, percentages, points or non-numerical indicators. That's why, the practical implementation of the innovation was left up to the authorities in each individual region based on financial and demographic status. But what about potential abuses of these capabilities? What if people who have done nothing wrong accidentally end up on a black or red list, in addition to the social rating system, drawing on the concept of George Orwell's novel 1984, China closely monitors its citizens using state-of-the-art equipment. China has reason to strive to become a world leader in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Cameras are equipped with facial recognition modules, body scanners, and GPS tracking. For example, 
if you jaywalk at a red light, you immediately end up on a list of shame, with your photo displayed on large banners. The Republic needs advanced technology to continuously, efficiently and accurately analyze video footage gathered while surveilling the population. No human can handle such a task. Another source of data on people is mobile apps. They collect information on users that may not contain anything illegal per se. But after analysis, literally laying people bare, the apps can describe how someone spends their time, how much they earn, what they spend money on, who they interact with, what games and books they like. And that's just a small, relatively innocuous part. A third data source is Wi-Fi traffic analyzers. In the 90s, these were a favorite tool for hackers to intercept usernames and passwords. Later sniffers began to be used for benevolent purposes, to detect computer viruses and various errors. But the core principle remains the same, it's surveillance. The specificity of traffic analyzers is processing a relatively small amount of data, especially by today's standards. And it's done mostly manually. So sniffers are used selectively, to search for particular keywords. A fourth source of information on people is big data from government archives, education, healthcare, civil registry, traffic tickets, police records, bank documents. All this contains a wealth of details on every individual that simply can't be processed yet due to the titanic volume, and the data awaits its hour, when blockchain technology becomes powerful enough to be the tool of Big Brother. China is a global leader in developing financial technologies. While some countries have struggled to implement a quick payment system, Chinese citizens have seamlessly used WeChat or QR codes in Alipay, accordingly China is also among the first countries in the world to roll out a digital currency. In March 2023, the ability to make quick payments in digital yuan appeared in the social network WeChat. The expectation is that the introduction of the digital yuan on WeChat will increase use of the national currency. The launch of the feature was announced by the Chinese publication The Paper. Payment is only available in WeChat mini-apps using the quick payment system. Developers plan to add more payment options over time. For now individuals from other countries can't purchase the digital yuan. But judging by the pace of implementation, that is likely just a matter of the near future. As we can see, George Orwell's dystopia is systematically unfolding around the world. It's just more pronounced in some places, depending on technological development and resources, and less visible in others. But like a huge octopus, this concept is starting to envelop the entire globe, without exception. And in this grand project, China is one of the trailblazers.